So it's, uh, we just had the full moon of December, the last full moon of the year, and it's still shining brightly at night. I don't know if you get to see it where you are. Um, And this is uh, just to say that this is um, a special day for the bhikkhuni sangha actually for the fully ordained nuns because uh, it's the day celebrating the day that um uh, bhikkhuni sangamita who is the daughter of king ashoka she was a princess uh, traveled by ship to from india to sri lanka and took uh, a boat carried a bodhi tree um, and another, uh, you know, like a Sangha of bhikkhunis went with her and they established the bhikkhuni order in Sri Lanka. So it, uh, it, uh, without her making that journey, we, uh, so then the, it went, the, so the order went to Sri Lanka, from Sri Lanka to China, from China to uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, uh, Korea, Japan, and through that lineage, are we Theravada bhikkhunis who are, who are around now were able to, you know, take that or take the ordination. So it kind of comes full full circle. So to, so this full moon is a time is a celebration of bhikkhuni sangamita and our lineage, and it's also obviously it's a time of you know, this holiday season. So it's a solstice coming up and Christmas coming up and. Um, actually, I don't know the timing of other things, I must admit. Hanukkah, I'm not sure when that is. Has it come? It's already been, it's happened. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's a time of, uh, it, it, to me, it's a time of light with this bright full moon. And it's the longest, you know, because the nights are so long, the moon shines longer than other times in the year. So, uh, and the Buddha often often refers to that speaks about the full moon as the you know it's like the the true potential of our our mind is like the full moon, obscured from clouds, when it's not, you know, full of greed, hatred, and delusion. So our work is to free ourselves from those clouds and let the let the heart and mind shine brightly so as a support for that i'd like to invite everyone to take the three refuges refuge in the buddha the dhamma the sangha and uh, the five precepts if you would like to do so so you can join me now so i'm going to chant in pali and, and you just join in from home with your you know, just stay muted and, and join me we'll do it together first first we pay homage to the buddha the perfectly enlightened one namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Bhutang saranang gachami Dhammang saranang gachami, Sankang saranang gachami, Dutiyampi putang saranang gachami, Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami, Dutiyampi sankang saranang gachami, Tatiyampi Bhutang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Sankang Saranang Gachami And I'm going to chant in Pali, even though it's not there. And then 
we end, then we can say together the English. Panati pata vera mani sika padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adinna dana vera mani sika padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi chachara vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musavada vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precepts to refrain from false and harmful speech. Sura Mereya Majapamadatana Vera Mani Sikapadang Samadhyami. I undertake the precepts to refrain from in consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. Imani pancha si kapadani si lena sukating yanti si lena boga sampada si lena nibuting yanti tasma si langwe so These are the five precepts. Sila or ethics is a support for true happiness. Ethics are a support for true wealth. Ethics are a support for the peacefulness that leads to enlightenment. So take good care of your ethics. Okay, so please find a, a posture for meditation. <clears throat> Something that's, that's comfortable enough and uh, but not too comfy. So you want to have a <clears throat> support for the spine to be straight if possible. And a good foundation beneath us, whether that's whether we're sitting with a, with a chair or on a mat, <clears throat> or if we need to lie down for physical reasons, then uh, a more firm base is good. <clears throat> <clears throat> so finding your posture for meditation and let the posture of your body reflect the posture of your mind or maybe not reflect but uh, encourage a similar posture in your mind <clears throat> Sometimes the mind is all over the place. And then if we align our posture in a careful and attentive way, it helps to align the mind. So being aware of your body sitting here. <clears throat> Any comfort, <clears throat> comfort or discomfort, 
just knowing it as it is. This body that we live with every moment of every day is part of what we are during this life. I'm noticing if there's any attitude of aversion or distraction. Just let the breath bring you fully into connection with the body. With this warm living body. This amazing complex somewhat miraculous process that we call the body. If you need to take a few deep breaths, you can do that just to connect. Letting your attention settle with the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Letting go of thoughts, concerns, just allowing your attention to settle with this natural process of breathing in and breathing out. Letting this flow, this rhythm of the breath, bring a sense of peace. Of well-being.
So this is uh, from a monastic perspective. This is the the last full moon of the year. So the moon, the lunar cycle, is important to us, and and it's also coming up to solstice and the Christmas for those who do Christmas and. Uh, it's not too far from the new year. One of the one of the celebrations of the new year. And I was just reflecting on that, you know, it's with solstice, it brings the, the longest night, the shortest day, long night, long dark night. But this year, you know, sometimes the new moon falls on solstice and it's a it's a very dark night, although then the stars shine brightly. And uh, this year, solstice falls in line with the full moon. So we get to have the moon shining you know, for a long, long time through the long dark night. And sometimes, uh, just as I was reflecting on that, I was thinking, oh, yes, you know, you know sometimes in our practice, they, we go through those, those long dark nights you know, where things are really difficult or we can't see clearly or we're not sure what's coming next. And, and then that uh, the full moon is like the the light of awareness, clarity that uh, that shines regardless of whether the the night is long or even during the day. You know, sometimes we can see the when the sun is up, we can still see the moon shining in the sky subtly. So the the light of awareness. Um, we can bring to bring to everything. And uh, as, as long as we're invested in things being a certain way, we create suffering for ourselves. So if we want, if we want, if we have, and often the, our ideals are very, very beautiful. You know, I, I'm a bit of an idealist myself. <laughs> you know, and often our ideals are very beautiful and, and um, inspiring and noble and and then <clears throat> life doesn't quite line up the way we hope and things don't work out quite the way we want them to and and, uh, and then we get upset you know think it, should, it shouldn't be like this why can't it be you know why can't things be harmonious and beautiful and why can't people be generous and kind and patient and you know keep good ethics and all of that and yes, yeah, so it's a good question, actually. Why can't people do that? I think that's actually a question worth investigating. And, you know, the world is like this. Our environment is like this. Our family is like this. And uh, it's very, very important to, to, you know, come down from the ideals. You can keep our feet on the ground. The earth is made of fallen leaves and fallen bodies and uh, time you know so we keep our feet on the earth the ground the the simple the reality and we can still look up, you know, see see the moon or see our guiding star. <clears throat> we can still have the it's not, not that we lose our inspiration and just deal with the worldly things, but we keep a balance of, of the two. So if we're only involved in the in the worldly things, life is somewhat meaningless. And if we're only gazing at the stars, we're stumbling and falling into holes along the way. So we need to keep the balance of the two. And uh, somehow the, the 
that process of samsara, you know, the the, uh, the endless, the Buddha speaks about the beginningless and endless um, process of, of birth, aging and death that's been going on. You know, we, he said there's no discernible beginning to this process and, the, and there's no discernible end. So we've been part of that for goodness knows how long. And uh, so that can be like, oh my goodness, help, you know, get me out of here. Or it can be like, okay, you know, there's something to learn. So I, I really enjoyed the film Groundhog Day. It's kind of old now, but it's a good teaching because we go through the same things again and again. And, uh, you know, we're coming up to the holiday season and whatever that may mean for you. And, uh, when there, when there are particular particular times like this, we can meet them, we can, we can see how, how we met these things in the past, what has happened in the past, and are we just going to recreate that? Are we just going to have the same habit, habitual reactions? Are we going to have the same desires, the same hopes, the same resentments as we've had in the past? Or can we meet this as an opportunity to see well, to cultivate, actually, can we make this as an opportunity to cultivate, to cultivate wholesome states, to uh, strengthen our patience, strengthen our kindness, strengthen letting go, maybe strengthen listening. So, so you know, life keeps on and on and on, providing us the, with these opportunities. <laughs> relentlessly and much of the time we forget we don't we don't see that we just we just we got some idea of how we think things should be how we want things to be what we want what we don't want and uh, that that kind of pushing and pulling of uh, in in that's pushing and pulling in itself creates the, the struggle, creates the, the difficulty. So I noticed the other day, I was, I was not in a very strong mode in that way, but just there was a little bit of that going on in the mind. And uh, it wasn't terrible, you know, it wasn't like extreme difficulty, but it was just like, uh, you know, wanting things to be different to how they are and feeling a bit like, oh God, this again. And then suddenly they're just remembering the Noble Eightfold Path. Oh, yeah, the Noble Eightfold Path. You know, okay, well, how does that apply right now? And which, you know, it's all, it always applies. It always applies in every moment. It's like, oh, yes, yeah, so right thought, you know, right, right understanding, everything's changing, everything's impermanent, everything's conditioned. And so there's certain causes and conditions right now for, for these if this situation to arise and then all right thought thoughts of letting go we kind of let go of wanting things to be different to how they are thoughts of goodwill thoughts of kindness you know it's like oh yeah you know, oh yeah i can i can bring a little bit of that up you know i can muster a little bit of that a little bit of goodwill and, and even sometimes just presence, just bringing presence to what's going on is enough. Just moving out of the kind of uh, murky thinking into being present with what's here, what's here now. And uh, when, we, when we bring our mind or our attention into presence, it's, it's like it's quite delightful. You know, things, just the most ordinary things start to have a sort of a, a brightness, clarity. So even just looking at, you know, a piece of furniture, something like the most ordinary thing can suddenly be different. It's got a, it's got a, there's a, there's a clarity or there's a softness or a brightness, you know, just to, to the most ordinary things. So it sounds a little funny, but it's, it's like, it's, it's, always here this opportunity to see in a different way to see with with 
with clarity with with a, with a mind that's not just overwhelmed not just kind of mi mired with wanting and not wanting and it might be that we can only see that for a moment you know we can only drop those things for a moment but that moment will be a, a moment of clarity and brightness it's beautiful so we have to cultivate this path and it doesn't just sort of land in our lap usually we might get moments like that but usually we have to put a bit of work in and the work is to remember to be present and to remember to be present very simple and then to see what are we doing what am i doing with this present moment Am I wanting it to be different? Am I ignoring? Am I not liking something that's here? So it's this practice of turning toward what is. And sometimes when we do that, you know, what we find is, is quite hard, it's difficult, it's painful, it's challenging. Often that's, um, sometimes that's from the outside. And, uh, you know, sometimes we need to change our situation. And, and if we, if we're attuned, you know, if we're in line, if we're, if we're sort of aligned inside, then we'll know when the, when the time to do that is. And then, you know, it's also up to whether conditions support that. So sometimes we have to change our actual living situation in some way. And sometimes we just have to change what's inside the way we're meeting our experience. We can have the, the most perfect conditions and then inside there's a, a hurting or a resentment or a, or a desire for something better. spend the whole life looking for some better place, better situation. Never, never find it because it's not outside, but it's the place we're looking for is, is inside. So it's what we cultivate. It's what we what we do with this, with this heart and mind. So we live with this every moment of every day. This, this one, your one. So this is the place to, uh, to make a beautiful abode, a lovely place to dwell. And so there's many ways you know, to do that. Sometimes we need, you know, there, there are the, 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 um, the practices, the, the Brahma Viharas, practices of, of generosity, patience, um, and, and thinking in, you know, thinking in, in the way of like meeting our experience in the way of opportunity. So when difficult things arise, an opportunity for getting stronger, when conditions are quite pleasant, an opportunity to you know, feel gratitude or to cultivate um, greater clarity when things are um, you know, very fast things everything's happening a bit too fast an opportunity to just take a breath feel your feet on the ground not get swept up at all so you know, there's, there's every moment really is, is an opportunity to cultivate the path. And, and the most important thing is, is to remember, just to remember, it's very simple, to remember, oh, this is an opportunity. And then it's like, okay, so what, what do I do with this now? You know, it's, it's like, if you, if you can just get that far of recognizing the opportunity and then asking the question, how do I skillfully meet this? Then the path kind of unfolds from there.
And our meditation practice is very, very important. Without uh, the meditation practice, without the practice of presence, of settling, we just carry on following the same old habits and end up in the same old places. So to spend some time, if possible, every day, just uh, sitting quietly, breathing in and breathing out. Letting the breath give you uh, some, some peace and maybe even some profound teachings. It's very important to, to take care of our meditation practice. You know, as a personality, we just kind of keep on going around rather endlessly. And the meditation allows us to stop really the whole the whole kind of story the whole play of it all stops for a while can do and then we start to see reality the reality of change the reality of interconnectedness there can be this you know we see the how all of this that we take so seriously and, and believe so strongly to be real is not as real as it appears. So these are these are fruits of med cultivating meditation. And as we see in that, you know, as we start to see more clearly, life gets easier. Not that not that conditions necessarily get easier. But, uh, but our experience of living gets easier. We're not so burdened in the same way. If we understand the, the process and how we can influence it or not, you know. So there's times when it's really important to cultivate, you know, metta or um, of very, very clear, skillful states and skillful responses and there's times when it's good to just be you know not not be responding to just dwell and abide and be so um as we practice you know our natural wisdom gets to know more and more how to respond to each moment of life and uh, of course, you know, we get to learn from our mistakes and we get uh, to grow, grow strong through the struggles. And we get to uh, see that, you know, everything we hold on to has to, has to pass. So we have to let it go. You know, all of that reveals itself. As we as we go through this, as we traverse this path of practice, so uh, I was just visiting my family. I spent three weeks with my mostly at my mum and sister's place, and my brother around the corner. And uh, my sister has been a practitioner for a long time, and not not Buddhist, but uh, as as has a strong spiritual practice and and uh, she mentioned a number of times to me while I was there well you know what they say if you think you're enlightened go and spend a couple of weeks with your family <laughs> um so it was good it was actually kind of fun to hear her it's from her and and it's like yeah it's see what comes up you get to see what what it stirs up and uh and that that uh, Thing of it, like you know, how many times have we reacted in the same way to the same situation with the same people? Do we have to just keep doing that again and again and again, or can we just try something different? So this, you know, we have this opportunity, and it may be that over these holidays, that's more for you. I don't know. I have no idea what people are doing these days. Actually, maybe people don't get together anymore. With COVID and all, uh, but anyway, whether whether you're in person or whether it's just uh, through zooms or calls, 
just to see like yes people people stir up the the dross the stuff that needs to be worked through so rather than getting upset with them we can be uh we can even say thank you thank you for showing me the work i still need to do and then we need to uh you know have good enough conditions that we can do that work so we can't always do it in the, in the midst of the challenges sometimes we have to extract ourselves for a while and, and then do it but the work is ours to do it's not for the world to become perfect so we don't have to feel difficult feelings it's for us to do the work inside so i wanted to offer that today and uh, we have a little bit of time if people want to share anything or ask any questions and no, no i'm not sure if you want to take the recording off for the q a time or do you leave it on i don't know are people okay with it being give me a show of hands recording off not seeing any hands okay uh, your faces won't won't show on the recording just so you know oh good there you go just voices there you yeah. go so if anyone wants to share their own experience or, or have any questions then please it's a good time yes please Let me unmute you. Let's see. Yes, Sylvia. And just please just say your name. Well, you don't have to say your name. So if you, would you say your name? Yes. Good, good, good afternoon. My name is Gina. Gina. Nice seeing you all here again. Thank you, Ananda Body. It was just beautiful. The meditation, as it always is with you. I wanted to share something and i think ask something from you and maybe other people around i'm going through a period where i i it's the onset of a um, illness in my ear a tinnitus it's called and i was told there's no cure for this that i just have to learn how to live with it and so what's going on with me it's is that it's this rumble in my ear very very you know hard to take because it goes on forever it never stops day and night and so when it's quiet and when i meditate and when i try to sleep it just drives me crazy <laughs> so um you know i've i at the beginning i fought it i went to the doctor i tried to see what i could do about it and even when i was told there's nothing to do that i just have to get a you know adapt and adjust to this and that in time maybe your brain you know it gets better so it's this this is something that's um, for me like a challenge like the ones that you talk about something that you just have to accept and learn how to live with this new thing and um, there's a kind of you know there's a resistance because uh, it just I, I don't know how to explain this my mind knows that i have to live with it but there's something inside me that just resists and it's hard thank you yes mm -hmm. sometimes we ha we have to just really give voice to that part that that's just going no no i don't want it you know because like the 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 mind understands rationally Oh, you know the doctor says this and it's not going to go away and i understand and then the heart is maybe grieving you know grieving the loss of how it was before when when we didn't have to live with that uh, constant sound so there is something that, that it may be that you that you need to take a little bit of time to listen to that part of you and allow that part of you that's really upset about it 
and that's really maybe angry or or resentful or I mean resentful is kind of a bit of a suppressed anger so ang angry or or sad about it and just let that part be heard fully and and maybe even express you know and then in a, in a little bit in a way that we have to talk with a child you know it's like we don't we, we don't always get what we want but you know the child isn't always going to get what it wants but it, it's you have, just have to kind of go along anyway actually when i was getting onto the airplane there was one little girl who just did not want to get on the airplane she was just like no no i don't want to get on you know and it's like we're all on our way you know there's no way she was going to get it she's like there's no way she was going to be able to not get on the airplane she had to get on and with her family and and they're just watching that it's like yeah that's just, that's how it is and when you're when you're that you know that little girl doesn't understand why does she have to she doesn't want to and it's like well you know because there's a conditions are such that you can't it's too late now you, you just gotta go on and in some ways it's kind of like that you know it's like no i don't want it to be like this but it is like this so so um yeah, allowing the the grief or the the rage or whatever may be there, and listening to that and letting it be heard, and then letting yourself settle into how it is, and the and the the difficult the really the real difficulty that arises, you know, is is the is the wanting it to be other than how it is. So I think there's there's a value in just really letting yourself feel that and know that, and then and then. You have to let that go. And is is the sound um is it like a rumbling or is it like a high pitch or what is it? What sort of sound is no, it? Oh, it's like um like those machines that drill the pavement, like very oh, yeah, yes. very very strong, and it's like more like a vibration in the whole skull. I don't hear it like in my ears, but in the skull, like it just vibrates mm -hmm. strongly. Yes. Yeah, and to try to you know to try to develop art later on, you know, once you get past the when it, once you've had the time to feel that whatever it is you feel the anger or the sadness, to try to embrace it as part of your experience, you know, to try to 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 turn towards it and to like imbue it with with. Uh, metta or acceptance you know because it's there yeah and these bodies you know it's there and it's also there's a teaching is like these bodies are limited our faculties you know so they all they're good for a while and then as we get older or, or if we have an accident you know then they don't work the same and that's also part of the teaching it's just, they're one of the heavenly messengers that these bodies that you know, it's this body that's it's, it's a it's a beautiful um vehicle for the practice but it's also you know it hurts it's limited it, it gets old it dies it's not it's not to be uh, sought after so it can also be a support in in bringing up a certain like energy for the practice of uh you know, like, let's get on with it because this, this sangsara isn't really worth it. And I think it's important also to not, not try to get, you know, if, if you had, I don't know if you did, but if you had like maybe more refined meditation states before, not to try to get back what you had before, but to work with the conditions as they are now. This is different now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Sheila, yes. Good afternoon. I'm Sheila. Thank you so much, Aya Ananda Bodhi. Um, I Your words imbue that peace that is the difficult, um, really just resonated with me. And um, 
currently I'm in a pretty focused um, study of the Eightfold Path. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing that, that that tipping point, I've reached that tipping point where I have to walk the path. And I have to imbue and, and face and allow the trauma that I'm noticing has interfered with or blocked much of my um, walking the path and really being awake. And I can no longer um, not turn towards it. And it's, it's not a, um, a place where I feel unsafe. So I'm, I'm okay in that regard. But just saying, yes, I have to face this if I am going to practice and make the Eightfold Path and the Dharma um, part of my life. So mm -hmm. Im imbuing that piece of trauma and really appreciating it because that is my practice. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's so important what you're saying. Yes. And it's interesting the way you put it, you know, that it that it's um you can no longer say you can no longer turn away from it. You know, that it that it has to be incorporated into the into the path. And yes. Sometimes we resist, I think, for a long time to do that work. And I think the the path can take us a long way without doing it, but I do think that there comes a point where one has to just turn towards the particular conditioning that we have, the particular traumas, yes. And it's and it's um you know the 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 practice that you've you know, because you've been practicing for some time, the practice that you have already cultivated will be such an immense support as you meet that. And particularly the, the um, I think, you know, the understanding of a Nietzsche uh, change and not self, you know, those two things held in the right way, not, not if they're held in the wrong way, but held in the right way can really help to meet those really difficult places those those trauma places because then it's like we meet them knowing that you know that yes this happened to me to this one and even to my lineage maybe or, th or from my lineage it goes can go both ways and you know and so it needs to be dealt on that personal level and we know that ultimately it's like it is a process it is a process that can be changed and transformed. This, what I call me and mine, is a process that can be changed and transformed and and uh, and let go of. So yeah, yeah. May the may may all your good practice. You know, may you may you always receive the support of the practice you've already cultivated through this process and uh, may you may you realize true freedom may we all realize our true nature yeah and we have to help each other along the way too you know good friends are important too thank you so i think we've come to the end of our time and uh, I'd like to chant a little blessing for everyone for all beings 
Bhavantu te bhavatu samba mangalang rakang tu samba devata samba munda nu bhavena sadasoti bhavantu te bhavatu samba mangalang rakang tu samba devata samba dhamma nubhavena sadasoti bhavantu te bhavatu samba mangalang rakang tu samba devata samba sankhanu Bhavena Sada Soti Bhavantu Te Do take good care. Thank you for your practice.